Hello and welcome to Working with Miniatures. I'm Jim and today we're going to be painting a Native American Chieftain by Reaper Miniatures Chronoscope. We'll primarily be using Army Painter Speed Paints, War Paints, and Washes. Let's get to it. The miniature had a fairly large gap on the spear. I used Milliput to fix this, applying it and letting it cure before using the X-Acto knife and sanding sticks to shape it. You can see that I had primed this miniature originally in Vallejo matte black and airbrushed it with various browns with the intention of using this as a starting point for the clothing. After deciding to model the paint scheme after the Cherokee Indians, which was prevalent in Georgia before their forced relocation to Oklahoma, I ended up repriming it the same way as I did the dragon, which you can see in the video in the top right corner of your screen. These brown tones were just too dark. With pallid bone, I begun coloring in the largest sections of clothing. This took longer than it should as I assumed the frills would be different colors, so I avoided them. But after doing some more research on Native American clothing, this was generally not the case as it was commonly made of the same material as the rest of the clothing. Adding some sand golem to the pallid bone mix, I add shadows to the clothing. I found myself wasting speed painting, especially if I'm only painting one miniature at a time, as I often do. I'm trying to get in a habit where when I'm finished with the color, I mix it with other colors to hopefully reduce my waste. And so, I add a couple of drops of hardened leather to the previous mix and apply it to the spear, belt, scabbard, club, and vestments. I paint the knife handle with dark wood and the two visible tufts of hair using grim black. I'm generally not a fan of crusader skin as I feel it tends to give an ashen hue, but I give it a shot here anyway, knowing that I could always come back and change it later. Mixing slaughter red into the crusader skin, I apply it as a shade to the lower parts of the face. With pure slaughter red, I hit the tips of the feathers on the headdress and then the feathers on the spear. The front section of the headdress is painted in hardened leather and then the spearhead with Gravelord Grey. While I wait for all the speed paint to dry, I add a little bit of AK Interactive Sandy Desert to a bottle cap and with a cheap brush I add a little water and mix. Then with a smaller cheap brush I carefully apply and spread it over the base. I learned to thin the terrain pace in another project I already filmed previously but have not edited and uploaded, as I wanted to get this video out in time for Thanksgiving. Before, when using terrain paste, I used it undiluted and ended up using far more than what was needed. I probably wasted two thirds of my muddy ground and dry ground pastes. The best part about it, if I had bothered to read the instructions on the label, it says to thin it with water or acrylic compounds, but you know, I'm a man. Men do not heed instructions. After varnishing to prevent reactivations of speed paint, I transitioned to Army Painter's War Paints and Washes for the majority of the remaining work, painting the discs with a base coat of Basilisk Brown. The yellow highlights are then built up over increasingly less surface area by mixing Phoenix Flames with Basilisk Brown, followed by Pure Phoenix Flames, and then finally, Daemonic Yellow. I finished the hair by dry brushing Dungeon Grey over it, followed by a very mild dry brushing of Ash Grey. I do the same with the spearhead using Stone Golem and then finishing it with Spaceship Exterior, making sure not to fully cover the previous highlight. 
In the artwork and pictures I've seen on some of the Cherokee Indians' colors, I noted primarily reds, yellows, and blues outside of white and the hides worn. Now in all fairness, the Cherokee Nation consisted of multiple tribes with different names and purposes and were spread out over multiple U.S. states, so their garb may have varied widely. And though I did want to keep true to the Cherokee people, I also did not want to extensively research the various sub-tribes. After finishing with the blues, I drop strong tone wash over any clothing or materials that are yellow, beige, brown, or red. Mixing together Mr. Weathering solvent and multi-black, I do a pin wash over the feathers and some of the more detailed areas of the clothing. Not happy with the blue, I apply some blue tone to add a little more blue to the, well, blue. The feathers are then dry brushed with spaceship exterior followed by a lesser dry brush of matte white. The feather tips are then dry brushed with Mars Red. Dark skin wash is then applied to the hands and face. This helped immensely when it came to removing the ashen look that Crusader skin tends to lend. I added two coats of this wash, letting it dry in between. The highlights of the clothing were done first with Drake Tooth, followed by a lesser volumetric highlight of Brain Matter Beige. I then apply an assortment of washes over the terrain paste in sporadic applications before covering it all with dark tone to help them bleed together. I adhere a small rot to the base using super glue, then spread PVA glue with a cheap brush all around the base before sprinkling on flocking. I then tap off the excess. As a note, I caught myself tapping the excess into the unused portions, but I ended up throwing this all away. I wanted to keep my flocking fine, and if any glue was in the excess, then it may cause little clumps to form. Again, with super glue, I added two assorted army painter tufts to the base, positioning and shaping them with an X-Acto knife blade. Lastly, I hit the border of the base using matte black that was thinned with little water. This is the final result. For lessons learned, there are some spots on the clothing where I went a little too heavy with the wash, particularly on the flap of clothing between his legs. I also wished I used darker blues instead of the lighter tones I had used on the headdress and vestment. Adding the blue tone helped, but I still think it would look better, even darker. That's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you learned something or inspired to read about the natives that once lived in your area. Or better yet, maybe you'll also donate to the Cherokee Nation. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content of this video and would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Jim with Working With Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time. I bid you a fond farewell. Till the next video.